Hello, viewers, and welcome to uh, the latest episode of The Huddle. We've got a recurring guest back with us, Ross Yershon, uh, Director of Connecting Brands. Uh, Ross, thanks for joining us again. Brilliant. It's great to be here, Tim. Thank you. Yeah, looking forward to, to talking to you again. Um, uh, a, a subject close to, to my heart. I love the darts. Uh, we're going to talk about darts, darts betting, and darts uh, betting sponsorships. And uh, the reason I kind of got in touch with you about this interview is because, lo and behold, I was watching the darts, and, and you're on stage uh, presenting at the Grand Slam final. Um, tell us about how that came about. Yeah, it's uh, it is a big sponsorship for Mr. Vegas. Um, I engaged with them. In September of this year, they had a partnership. They have got a partnership with West Bromwich Albion, and they also announced that they were going to be the main sponsor of the Grand Slam of Darts, which is arguably one of the biggest darts events outside of the World Championship. So it's nine days. It's on Sky Sports. Uh, the broadcast was going to be absolutely outstanding for Mr. Vegas. And with Mr. Vegas being outside the UK and not having someone uh, local, it was perfect for what we do at Connecting Brands. We can help uh, activate uh, on the ground from many years of experience. And it worked really well for Mr. Vegas. They uh, they had outstanding activation. Uh, they got some good data uh, to really drive conversion. And the branding looked absolutely insane on the uh, on TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I definitely saw the Mr. Vegas uh, branding throughout the week. Um why did uh, why did they come to you for for this uh, this kind of this deal this uh, sponsorship? I think it was more because I've had fifteen years experience in the industry. I've been brand side and working independently. I know what it takes uh, to activate really well with a sponsorship, whether it's in football, horse racing, or in darts. Um, for a brand like Mister Vegas or any other brand entering a sponsorship for the first time. Um, you're spending a significant amount of, of, of budget and you need to really work hard and know how to work with the commercial teams at the right holder, in this case, the PDC, uh, to really drive good value, make sure the branding is great, deliver good content, uh, utilize your tickets and uh, hospitality tickets, and also ensure that you deliver a good fan activation, which, which we did really well. Yeah, um, dart sponsorships and, and betting that they go together quite well. As there's uh, there's plenty of them, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. But I wanted to ask you about kind of darts betting in general. Throughout the year, it, it's not going to compete with, let's say, a football World Cup. But actually, around this time of year, Ali Pali, um, it's when for operators, it it actually is right up there in terms of betting volumes, uh, volumes, as I understand. Oh, massively, because in terms of the uh, Sky Sports programming, darts is. Darts is pretty much outside of football, number one. Whenever the Premier League isn't on or the Championship isn't on, the darts will be on. It starts this Friday, the 15th, goes all the way through uh, to the first weekend in January, and it's non-stop. It's, it's fantastic. It's um, pre-event you can bet in play. Uh, again, like any sport now, the prop bets, uh, the bet builder um, is very strong in terms of what, what the bookies are offering. And it's great entertainment. If you're going to watch the darts, it's great to have a it's great to have a small wager. Obviously, if you're watching on TV as well, there's usually three, four games a night, so you can double up or even even add add, add prop bets in between uh, and make it an enjoyable nights watching. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I agree with all those things, and I'm definitely watching along every year. Um, so it's synonymous with the Christmas holidays these days. Um, out of interest, uh, you know, as uh, you're up there on the stage with with certainly at least one of them recently, who who you're backing to win the tournament? I mean, I can't I can't see past Luke Humphreys on form, but you know, maybe maybe you've got some other tips. <laughs> yeah, look, Luke Humphreys, he won the uh, Grand Slam of darts. He then followed it up to win the Players Championship. His averages is the best. His checkouts are the best. Um, he he's the one to beat now. At Alexandra Palace from obviously hearing from previous champions, that's when the pressure really kicks in. So yes, Luke won in Minehead. Yes, he won in Wolverhampton. Yes, the pressure was on for him to get over the line. But Alexandra Palace is a whole different ball game. Um, so again, if Luke plays Michael Van Gogh, and you've got Michael's experience of winning at Alexandra Palace, where for Luke, he hasn't yet obviously won the world so the pressure will be on if it gets to semi-final and final um, but if he plays consistently at the level he has been playing there's no one better out there and he does seem to have a calm head um, he's a hundred plus 
averages are the best in the business at the minute. So yeah, he's he's the one to beat for sure. Um, I also think Gary Anderson could have a good tournament. Um, his his averages are strong at the minute. Uh, obviously, Michael Van Gerwen's going to be there. Gerwin Price is going to be there. Um, Josh Rock was unlucky in the Grand Slam. So he, he, if he keeps his head, he could have a good tournament. And again, another player who could definitely win his quarter and maybe make the final four, uh, which is Stephen Bunting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Stephen Bunting, a few people have been picking him out. Anderson on form. It's interesting you mention um, the pressure because Gerwin Price, who you name dropped as well, he's even come out and said it was helped that there were no fans, you know, when he actually won the world championship and he hasn't done it since. And um, I think what's interesting is that we haven't mentioned Michael Smith, the the defending champ, because his form was just kind of unfortunately tailed off this year. Yeah, look, he's he's still a danger because if he picks up his form, uh, the tournament, obviously the first round is is tough for everyone. But then when it gets into uh, the latter stages, the longer matches, that's where I think a player can pick up their form. And if Michael says to himself, look, I'm back, I'm back at the place where I won last year. He's hitting his 180s. He's hitting his checkouts. Um, yeah, he is a danger. But on current form, yeah, I, I think it'll be tough for him to get over the line this year. Yeah. I mean, we, we could talk about darts all day. Um, but if we if we if I could uh, turn it back because because I'm I'm guilty of <laughs> of carrying that conversation going. But if we were to turn back to darts, uh, the sponsorship side, um, the World Championships coming up as you know as we're, as we're just talking about, Paddy Power sponsoring them, uh, that that's a big deal for them. It, it used to be William Hill, and um, unless I'm mistaken, I think Kazoo had it for, for one year, and it's interesting that it's right. it's just come straight back to betting, kind of a natural home for it. Yeah, look, as you said, look, there is a. There is a synonymous uh, link to uh, dart sponsorship being a being a Breton brand, um, and yeah, obviously Labrooks were the brand that took it. I think for a number of years. Mm. Then obviously it switched to uh, to William Hill. Kazoo took it for as you said a year. Now Paddy Power have put their um, hat in the ring, and yeah, it's going to be a very green Christmas. Uh, at Alexandra Palace, as we all know, Paddy Power, their unique brand, their unique marketing, it's going to be electric with what they do. They've already done some great marketing. Um, their charity donation is absolutely insane for every 180. I think they're giving a thousand pounds of prostate yeah. uh, cancer, which is brilliant. Hats off to Paddy Power, everyone in the marketing and commercial team. Brilliant idea. That'll go down well. I think then they'll start having some fun with the content that they produce with the players. And obviously, again, Ali Pali will just be green this year. And um, yeah, good luck to Paddy Power. Massive sponsorship, huge investment. It's not cheap to sponsor this, uh, so I'm sure they'll. I'm sure they'll do really well. Yeah, um, you, you mentioned earlier with Mr. Vegas and the Grand Slam, the kind of things that they they got from from that deal. What can Paddy Power be expecting? Because because ROI with sponsorships is is never easy to, uh, you know, specifically kind of very very accurately measure, but. Is it kind of you mentioned earlier the data, the exposure? Um, you know, what is it that makes this kind of marketing strategy it's obviously successful because so many brands do it? Yeah, I think for I think for Paddy Power as well, um, to sponsor this means branding wise and airtime to get your brand out there in the UK and also in other territories that they operate in. There's no one else that's gonna get that. So the share of voice that you get in terms of Punter's front of mind is is number one. Um, in terms of some activation for Mr. Vegas, we did a great fan activation game. We 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 had a we had a big darts board um, put in the activation zone where fans, if they hit 180, would get give, give them a drinks token, and then they could also win a chance for a massive bonus at Mr. Vegas, and also to win a signed dart board uh, by the players. So I'm sure Paddy Powell are going to do a big activation as well. Massive fan zone at Ali Pali. They'll be wanting to collect data to to drive new customers and uh, retain existing ones. So I'm sure they've got uh, a nice fan activation game where they'll get fans when they're outside the arena just before they're going in to get them to play darts. And uh, it works really well because, again, we had great take up from Mr. Vegas. The 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 fans enjoyed it. They love they love throwing a dart. Uh, a few of them actually got the bullseye, so we had a lot of tokens to give out. But it's good fun. It's really good fun, and that's what dart sponsorship is about for betting. It's not 
obviously massively like driving new signups, driving turnover, getting the faces of fans. Just let them have fun, and then hopefully they'll they'll see Mr. Vegas in other digital channels when they're online and think, oh yeah, Mr. Vegas, they sponsor the darts. Maybe I'll sign up with them. So do you see uh, darts continue to be a strong channel for for betting sponsorship in the future? Because as me and you have discussed before on, on the huddle, and you know it's, it's it's been talked about across the country, um, across the industry. Uh, football sponsorship has obviously seen a lot more regulation. Um, you know, we've got those new rules coming in in, in a few seasons. Um, will Darts continue to s- serve as, um, I guess, a, a happier partner for, for betting companies at the moment? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, betting brands love to engage in Darts sponsorship because it literally is going down the pub with your mates for the fans um, in the in the audience, in the arena, you 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 can, you can see the dartboard, but even if you're sitting front row, you've got no idea if you're if that player is hitting treble twenty. You're looking at the big screen. So for everyone in att- in attendance, they're usually eighteen and over, and um, it's great fun. And for betting brands, again, it's perfect to just get your brand out there on broadcast as well. Like again, same as horse racing, and and and, and football. Betting brands will continue to to sponsor darts, and obviously the the team at the PDC they'll obviously be looking at what's going on in the government to see if their sport gets highlighted as one, uh, which will need to stop betting brands. There aren't there are other brands getting involved in darts. Um, there are a lot of second tier sponsors that invest a hell of a lot to partner with the PDC for a calendar year, um, and these brands, should they have to, would then have to step up and take a main sponsorship. Um, but the foreseeable future, again, the guys at the PDC, brilliant to work with. Um, they know how to work with gaming brands. They know what betting brands need and they can serve with their audience uh, a great appeal and they can hit certain KPIs, which is 18 plus uh, male audience with obviously a strong propensity to to have a bet. One additional point, which... Um, yeah. A lot of the anti-gambling bodies do uh, do push is if you're under 18 and you're coming through the ranks and you're playing in a PDC tournament um, and you're wearing the brand logo of the gaming sponsor, ultimately you're under 18, you're wearing, you're wearing the sponsor, which uh, again, I know a lot of anti-gambling uh, companies that see young professional footballers uh, who play that are under 18 wearing obviously a betting brand it's um, I understand where they're coming from um, but again it's up to the government to to change any laws on this yeah um, well Russ thanks very much for your time uh, hope you enjoy the tournament and um, yeah best of luck with everything connecting brands brilliant thank you great to be here with you on the huddle